Hey guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're doing really, really well. Bit of a different setup today because we're in my living room, aren't we? Because I thought then that way Heidi can play on the floor. She just loves talking when I'm talking. And um, that way Heidi can play on the floor whilst I film this video. <laughs> because trying to film where I normally film is a bit of a pain when this one just wants to crawl around now. So I want to talk about everything that's happened between the months of seven to eight. So she's just turned eight months old, haven't you, Bubba? You've just turned eight months old. So there's so much to talk about from the last month. I feel like everything has happened at once and I'm so excited to share the milestones and the development points that Heidi has reached. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. So the first thing that we kind of changed as soon as she turned seven months old is that we started to do two meals a day. So I know that it varies from person to person how they wean their baby and how many meals they introduce. And I think it depends as well quite a lot how your kind of routine structures before you have a baby. So like if you have other children, it might work out a bit differently. But for us, we started with lunch and then we introduced dinner this month. So we introduced dinner, which was the newest meal for her. So every time we introduced a meal, we replaced the bottle that was in that place. So yeah, she basically cut out her six o'clock in the night feed in exchange for a solid food meal. Who's that? Can you see yourself? Which I know ideally that's quite late for a baby's dinner, but we're just trying to do it as we feel like works best for us if that makes sense so that's what we started to do and then that way as well it stops her napping before bedtime which we has found works so much better because she would have like a danger nap before her bedtime and that would mean that bedtime could be from 9 p.m onwards whereas obviously we wanted to bring that forward a little bit so we cut out that nap that she would have at six o'clock and now she starts to have a final bottle before bed at half past eight which again i still feel like is a little bit late but it's what works for her and it ensures that she sleeps in till about seven o'clock in the morning so instead of feeding her at like half seven to get up at six that's just what's working for us at the moment so that's what we've been doing isn't it in terms of meal time as well coming up to the eight month mark i knew that when she turned eight months old i was going to start doing her breakfast because i wanted her to be on three meals a day relatively soon you just love pulling up my hair don't you so i knew that i wanted to move her on to three meals a day and breakfast i left till last because i was really unsure how to do it so i wasn't sure whether when she wakes up to give her breakfast right away or to give her a bottle then breakfast and I'm trying to think as well what will be best when I go back to work so I don't want to do one thing and then have to change it then so I'm going to decide that and I'll let you know what we decide in our eight to nine month update which is crazy you're growing up way too fast so I touched on it then as well but we have brought her bedtime forward from 9 p.m to <laughs> half past eight and she sleeps through the night most nights when we do that so that's been working out really great and I'm just really conscious that I want to make sure that she's getting enough sleep of a night because I don't want her to be overtired when she is overtired or her bedtime is broken or whatever might be wrong you definitely notice it the day after so yeah we brought it forward a little bit obviously it's not like I know a lot of people that put their babies to like to bed at like half six and seven but for the moment that's what's working for us obviously the aim will be to bring that forward a little bit more but I don't want to just suddenly do that and then her start waking up in the night so if we slowly bring it down then I feel like that's going to be best for us and for Heidi as well and whilst I'm on maternity leave it's still okay um but we'll just cross that bridge if it needs to change once i'm back at work and need a little bit more time of an evening but yeah that's another thing that we've changed so within the seven to eight month mark as well she finally fits into six to nine clothes so she has been a bit behind when it comes to fitting into the next size clothes which is really surprising because she was a nine pound free baby you were a big bubba wasn't you but i feel like she just averaged down a bit honestly my like weighing clinic is the most unwelcoming and is only open like set times and it's really weird and really difficult to kind of understand when to go to get her weighed like and put it on the chart but 
in terms of clothing as a guide she is a little bit before her time so she's now in six to nine clothes which is great and she's still in them even obviously it's not like she's had like a massive growth spurt and now isn't in them so she's in them which is really good because we had so many like summary bits that I bought for the size up when she was in three to six. I was like, I'll get them six to nine. She'll be in them during the summer. And luckily we've had some really hot days where she can like make the most of them. So her first tooth did cut the gum, which I've been saying for months. I feel like it's going to happen soon. It's going to happen soon. Um, but it did finally cut through the gum and then literally like maybe the next day a couple of days after i then saw the one next to it so it's her two bottom teeth have both actually now come through which is crazy i feel like nothing happened for ages and then two of them have come through at once which makes total sense because we've had a few wake ups in the night and i think it's basically down to the fact that she's teething she's waking up she's in a bit of pain i know from like my own experiences tooth ache or pain is definitely the worst kind of pain so we've had a few wake ups in the night which obviously isn't ideal um but i feel like that just comes with teething as like part of the territory so yeah that's kind of happened which is always the case right Babies always know when you're like going solo, I swear. So I say it all the time, but Rich works of a night and so he'll get some days off and some days obviously he's working. So I swear she never wakes up in the night when Rich is off. It's always when he's working and I swear to God she knows that it's like not ideal. So <laughs> obviously like when Rich is off, even if I wake up with her in the night, I can then have a lie in and make up for it. But when he's working he literally gets home goes straight to sleep wakes up goes straight to work so he's basically not here and yeah i always feel like she's she's plotting it when he is working the next thing as well is that we have finally got her a new car seat so she was obviously in the one that she was in from when she was born and it felt really weird to change that up i kind of wasn't really ready to do that because i feel like it was such a moment when she was in that and she was so tiny even seeing her like get bigger for that was really really like weird but when she finally got to a point where we thought you know what it's best to actually change it up and get the next kind of um is it like stage car seat then we just knew that she was like definitely getting bigger but it's just weird because obviously when they are so tiny and you bring them home for the first time they're in that little car seat and now she's just like she doesn't fit in it her legs are way too long for it so we got one actually on the amazon prime day deal thing which was like obviously ages ago but we got one there it's a graceo one or graceo i can't really remember the brand but instead of like 250 pounds like 300 pounds something crazy we got it for 110 pounds which is obviously still quite a lot but the one that we've got does actually double up as a like from birth until they're 12 years old so we just thought that something like that would be better than buying one for the next stage and then getting a different one and then getting a different one and then obviously if we have another then we've got the other car seat from when they're born that they can go in and then Heidi can stay in the one that she's in and then we can just cross that bridge when they get too big for that one but obviously that's not for years time yet so that's obviously not like our main concern when we were looking at them but to get such a good deal like you don't realize how expensive car seats can be so yeah she's in that one now and it is a bit of a pain though she is still rear facing so the one that we got can be rear facing or front facing which is brilliant because i think they advise you that your baby should remain rear facing until they're like nine months old or something or a certain weight but the longer that you can keep them rear facing like the better it is for their safety in the car so that's obviously what we're doing going by the guidelines you just always want to do what's best for them so that is what she's doing at the moment and it's just a bit more of a pain obviously with the ones from when they're born you can take it out of the car you can bring them in she's oh, she's been such a pain she's obviously still teething now and she's got some other teeth coming through at the top so everything is like a moan <laughs> um but yeah, it's just more of a pain so it doesn't come out of the car. So you have to like fiddle her around in it. This one doesn't have an ISO fix base either. So you are trying to put her in it whilst in the car. And there's like a seat belt that holds it in. And it's like a bit of a kind of trying to get her in job. I'm getting more used to it, but it definitely wasn't as easy as the other one. We also got her this walker. I will show you because it's literally here. So this is a walker that she can like stand in and then it has wheels 
that she can go around. Um, so we bought that for her within the last month because she has always had such an interest in movement, but like literally can't move as much as she might want to. So we bought the walker. I know that there's like a few different opinions online whether walkers are good for development or not, but I just got one because I just thought it will help her move around. She's so happy in it and she absolutely loves it. So I'm really pleased that we got it because I feel like it's something for her that she really wants to do. She loves like walking around and wobbling around and it's so cute to see as well. Um, and that one that we got ended up being like £25, I think. It was like £21 plus delivery. So it's really, really affordable and it folds down as well. So when she doesn't like need it anymore obviously they normally start walking about like a year so when she doesn't need it anymore doesn't fit in it anymore we can fold it away and either store it for the next one or give it to someone we're not too bothered so she absolutely loves that she just loves waddling around and she'll go from like one room to the other she'll go if like we call her she'll waddle over to us and it is lovely to see and i just feel like she's wanted to be able to like walk for ages but just can't so it just like helps her move around she's happier and then obviously in turn we're happier as well another thing that we've noticed in the last month is that she's so much more entertained by things and i would say self-entertaining but just like now obviously i'm talking to the camera but she just wants to get my attention constantly but she is a bit more self-entertaining in the sense that we can give her a load of toys and she is happy to play with them for a little while until she gets obviously bored um and i do notice as well that with me she has less interest in entertaining herself or just constantly wants me to do things with her whereas when rich is downstairs with her she's more than happy to like sit in her ball pit for 20 minutes and play or just kind of crawl around and entertain herself whereas for me she is very different it's crazy how different they are already from like one parent to the other but she's definitely getting more entertained by things and toys interest her a lot more now than they ever really did so that's really nice to see and like just seeing her like engage with things like that that we've bought her and she's like learning to use things so the toys that have like the spinny things that you push down and they spin she's really good at pushing that down and like love seeing them spin so it's nice to see that she's learning and is actually getting like fun out of them as well i kind of mentioned it there but she is crawling now literally like one day she just decided to do it and then was confident then. I feel like she's much like her dad in the sense that they won't do something until they know they can do it really well. And then once they know how to do it really well, then they just like do it all the time. So she crawls all the time, everywhere. And it was literally just like, she just started doing it. And we were like, oh my God, she was crawling to wet wipes because she finds wet wipes so interesting. So she actually crawled to wet wipes the first instance. And then from then she just did it really really well so that's really nice to see and with that she's also like pushing herself up to sit up and she just got so much more like center of balance i feel like and just again like the fact that she can move so much more is making her so much happier and if you put like a toy at one end of the room she'll crawl to it it's just not a problem for her so she absolutely loves that newfound freedom with movement it means for us obviously not that you ever do but you cannot take your eyes off them for like one minute she loves things that aren't her toys so she'll crawl to phone chargers wall sockets drawers she'll try and like push herself up against the table and she'll see a water bottle and want to get that and it's just all things like that where you're like you have so many toys like play with them they're so much more fun but yeah that's definitely something that we've noticed in the last month but she's just such a good crawler and it's so nice to see that she's basically hitting those milestones i know that all babies hit them all, all different times but she was showing the signs of like being close to crawling for so long so for her to actually put that into crawling is just amazing so i'll quickly show you i'm sure that you can probably see them in the background but we got these foam mats i'll show you here so these are like foam mats in the living room and it's like a wooden effect too Look at all your toys look at all your toys so this basically provides like a like soft environment for her to play with so they're just super super soft and squidgy as you can see here they're relatively thick too so we had wooden flooring which i mentioned before but we just just found such a pain with her trying to move especially with her crawling now 
we didn't want her to be restricted to just like the rug in the living room or stuff like that so we've got these foam floors which may basically makes it like a massive soft play area that's what kind of vibe i'm getting from it we got these like fake wooden ones as well i'll try and leave them linked down below because i had so many questions when i first put them on my instagram stories because i was so excited that they came because i just feel like it opens up the space so much more for her she has so much more freedom in terms of moving and for us it's just so nice because for example i can put something on the tv and she can be in front of me crawling which is before we have like this rug here sorry everything is such a mess but we had like this rug that she could literally be on and then it got to wood flooring and so where she's like falling down and hitting her head we were just really worried that she was going to like genuinely hurt herself so with this it takes that fear out she's obviously still going to like fall down and hit her head but it doesn't cause her any pain because it's nice and padded and it just fits the room really well we got 92 square foot of it and we're able to bring it up to here me just sat on the floor and then it goes right up to our fireplace it goes round and then where it comes to like the door outside and stuff rich actually cut it to fit so that these corners and it goes around these tables where i've got the camera propped up on the lighting is so crazy but it doesn't look silly because i felt like with color ones it would make it look silly and this is our living room so with these like fake wooden ones it kind of goes with the theme of the living room and it keeps it a little bit like looking normal but it provides just a safe place for Heidi to play so we absolutely love these it was 42 pounds for 92 square foot and yeah absolutely love them they're like my favorite thing that we've bought in the last month I still need to do my like three to six month baby buys like my favorites and I'm gonna do a six to nine but just finding the time to film is so so difficult like obviously now I'm just sat here filming whilst she's playing around because I'm just really struggling with like when to film i literally applaud people that have kids and multiple children that are able to film because it's really really bad um but the last thing for heidi of the last month is that she's developed a real sense of separation anxiety so anytime i leave the room leave her um do anything she screams for me i also find that when she goes to bed if she realizes that she's obviously in a room on her own without me then she will start screaming and it's getting a lot worse i don't know if it's to do with her age i've i read somewhere that it was to do with like a leap or something but i don't know how long that lasts for um i don't really understand like leaps too well so let me know if your baby at around seven to eight months has had the same thing and tips to stop it basically i know that like we need to encourage her to be with other people a lot more but obviously when no one else is here everyone else works full time and you're on maternity leave it's just like the nature of it and i'm sure that when i go back to work it will change because it will have to so that is everything for Heidi. I'm aware I've been filming for like 21 minutes, so I'm gonna quickly get on to the things that have changed for me, and then we'll wrap up this video. So the only thing really to mention for me is the fact that I've now sorted out how I'm going back to work. So I'm going back to work the 21st of October, so it's still a little while away, but it's almost close enough that you have it in the back of your head, like maternity leave is ending soon. So. I'm going to be going back to work from October 21st for four days a week. That's just what we decided in terms of money. It's I'm using this octopus. <laughs> um, it's basically what we decided to do in terms of money. Obviously, we need money to afford everything. Obviously, maternity pay is rubbish and it's not a wage that we're able to live off basically indefinitely. So I needed to work more than getting that. So I also... I also feel like my job role would be better to do for the majority of the week. I have been three days a week might have been an option, but I just prefer, like I like being at work and I feel like three days would be quite distant from everything. Whereas for four days, it, you're there for the majority of the week. And it's definitely something that I can continue doing the job role that I was doing before I went off on four days and it's going to be absolutely fine so that was really nice to know because it, it is a worry about going back to work you don't know what they're going to say um legally they have to offer you your job back but the hours that you did previously so obviously i worked full-time before so legally they'd have to offer me a full-time position but if that's something that wouldn't work for us and you know they're able to say no which really sucks i just wish that there was more help in terms of going back to work 
but with that as well kind of mentioned already but rich's mum is going to be looking after heidi during those four days a week we're going to be paying her quite a significant amount to have heidi so it's not like she's just going to be looking after her we are paying her quite a lot a month to have her because it's going to still work out cheaper than nursery and it just means that Heidi is going to spend time with like family members instead of in a nursery environment that's just something that we've decided on it then also provides a bit more flexibility than a nursery might not be able to provide so that's what we're doing um i'm going to be going back for four days a week i'm just waiting to get confirmation as to whether i will have the monday off or a friday off so that's it really for this video and for the updates that's happened between seven to eight months obviously quite a lot has happened so this video is super super long but i hope that you've enjoyed this video i think that this one needs some lunch what do you think and we'll see you guys in our next video. Say bye. Say bye. Say bye. You're so unimpressed. You're so unimpressed. All right, see you later.